Hi, my name is Joshua Caraballo, and today we are in Washington, D.C. to talk to educators about their views on financial education. I'm Dr. Cheryl Ayers. I am currently the director of the Center for Economic Education. Uh, I also direct the Virginia Personal Finance Teacher Fellowship Program, and I am the founder and director of the National Economic Empowerment Project. I guess I would argue for economics and personal finance, both, because I think a lot of people shy away from economics because perhaps they weren't taught it or they weren't taught it in a way that's accessible to everyday life, which is what a lot of my research focuses on. So I would I would argue that if we're going to require personal finance, we also want to at least weave in uh, some of the economics. And so, you know, it depends. I think that um, a standalone course, I think there's research that shows that that is a better approach because when you integrate it into other subjects, sometimes it gets lost in translation. So, for example, if you integrate it into a math class, which I love interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary instruction, but if the student, for example, isn't, um, let's just use something simple like multiplication, if they're struggling with that mathematical uh, function, well, then clearly, if you try to layer on top of that personal finance, then you've kind of twice removed them from the learning objectives. And so, you know, I think it can be done integrated. Um, and I think each state definitely needs to make that call for themselves. Yeah, so in Virginia, when we legislated it in 2009, first of all, uh, retraining the teachers, right? We can't assume, not only do the students not understand personal finance, but often teachers don't have, you know, um, an expert level grasp on personal finance knowledge. Number one, making sure the teachers are up to speed. So in Virginia, after we legislated the course, wrote the learning standards, I created some institutes that were uh, 45 hours for teachers to go through so they learn the content and the pedagogy at the same time. Um, so we call that pedagogical content knowledge. So how do you teach, for example, and it's the basis of my own research, how do you teach specific topics in a way that's unique to that discipline, right? So you don't teach math in the same way that you teach science or the same way you teach language arts, for example. And so there are some uh, research-based strategies for teaching personal finance in, in the most effective way. So I think getting the teachers up to speed, but again, the whole problem with all school divisions is there's not enough time in the day. And so um, finding a way to um, teach it in an already crowded curriculum space is really difficult. But again, then it's about trade-offs, right? It's about economics, prioritization. So teacher training is important. Writing robust learning standards is important. Integrating some financial expert experts in the community is always good. And then making sure the teachers are trained, having a resource um, that is um, updated and current and engaging. And the last thing I'd um, want to suggest for other states to consider. So in Virginia, I have started um, based on a model in South Carolina, what's called the Virginia Personal Finance Fellowship Programs. And so what I do is I bring in, it's an application process, I bring in teachers, uh, we select the first year, that, which was last year, was a pilot year. We had 13 teachers that were recommended. They were rock star personal finance teachers. And so I put them through some training, some orientation, and then they then become the professional developers. So while we are very limited on the number of teachers that we can reach, so they go out into their school division and we particularly put them in Title I schools or schools with high percentages of provisionally licensed teachers so that those underserved, under-resourced communities have the resources that they need, have teachers that actually understand personal finance in a way that's accessible to their student population. And so I think um, having that as a, a model has really helped us have better coverage in Virginia for personal finance. To learn more, visit nefi.org.